anamorphic zooms. When Lao first told me about these, I was like, huh, like they're probably gonna be super huge, probably gonna be super expensive. No, they're actually priced very fairly. Uh, and the size of them, they're actually a little bit smaller than the Lao Rangers. Actually, let me go grab my Rangers real quick. So for anybody who saw my Lao Ranger review, you guys would have saw that I was pairing the Lao Ranger with their front anamorphic adapter, gave us 1.33x uh, anamorphic D-stretch there. But you can see how large and heavy that this whole setup was. I was having a lot of fun with this setup because you know, this is like the first budget parfocal anamorphic zoom that we had access to. But now we have that built into one lens and it's 1.5x stretch. These actually are going to match up with the nanomorphs very, very, very well. If you have any experience of the nanomorphs or you've seen other reviews or if you've seen my review my little short film that i shot the nanomorphs these are going to look very 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 similar similar characteristics between uh pin cushion distortion the sharpness is actually pretty damn great in these two again for being you know affordable anamorphic zooms like i don't think you guys realize how crazy these lenses are when it comes to anamorphic zooms again nothing like this is out in the market where it's at this price range any other anamorphic zoom you're looking at like panavision or ari like you're, you're looking at rental only and rental it's still going to be like quadruple the price of just buying a set of these which is wild lawa is really bringing something super unique to the market i don't even know if any other company is working on something like this i'm most likely going to use these on a lot of documentary projects and before we get into the rest of the video here is the ranger right here and then here's the anamorphic zoom i actually had to look up and look at which one is which because they feel the same in hand which is you know while that we're getting 1.5x so let's get into everything let's get on the details let's get into things that i like and the things that i don't like so first off the things that i do like so guys these lenses are for super 35 sensors and so i went out and i rented the new black magic because not only does it have full frame open gate but it also has super 35 4 by 3 which is essentially you know super 35 open gate and now we get proper coverage on here so let me show you guys real quick when we're in open gate you see the edges you know, up until around 40 millimeters, it will clear full frame. We are getting a lot of the pin cushion distortion on the edges though. So let me put it back into Super 35 four by three and there you go, it cleans up a lot more. I know we all want full frame lenses when it comes to anything, but you gotta realize if this was a full frame lens, it's probably gonna be twice the size. That's why Super 35 is still a great option, especially with all these like new cameras coming out. Super 35 sometimes looks just as good as full frame now. So pretty much everything I've used these on so far, I actually did clear image zoom on the Sony FX3, just 1.2 way. So these are actually pretty close to covering full frame. If you're someone like me that owns like multiple cameras, um, we'll get into some other things that are important when it comes to any type of zoom. You could pair Lawa's 1.33X adapter on it. Now we got 2X anamorphic parfocal zooms. I didn't bring lens support. We're gonna fucking cowboy it. All right guys, so our cowgirl's way out there. So I'm gonna punch all the way into 100. I'm gonna grab my focus, zoom back out and recompose. And I know that my uh, focus is, you know, critical. The joy is a parfocal sin lenses. This is not a toy though. Holy cow, it's heavy. I didn't bring lens support. We're gonna fucking cowboy it. Guys, with my left hand, operating focus, right hand, focal zoom trying to get some like documentary crash type zooms zooms is it's literally just jericho and i filming all this and zoom just allows us to like move way faster we're not having to change out the primes every time and redo the focus motor and you know audition primes we could simply just you know figure out the focal length we want to be at and just use that we're going to get an insert shot of me turning on this uh television over here so another cool thing you know about anamorphics is we can simply just swap this out right here i'll we'll throw this guy on here and you can see Everything aligns on both of the lenses, so I don't have to go and readjust my focus motor because everything's gonna be dialed in right there. If this was primes, we'd have to go and audition a 50, a 75, an 80, or 100 to see which one we want. So, but with the zoom, and again, run and gun stuff like this, like, like I don't think you guys understand, there's no anamorphic zooms out there for anybody like me, like you who might be watching this video if you're like an indie filmmaker, a YouTuber, a low budget documentary filmmaker, and you love anamorphics, 
this is now, you know, this is this is going to be a game changing type thing. So this new Tilta Focus motor actually connects to USB-C and some cameras like the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame with the L mount actually will provide power from the USB-C port. You see the focus motor is connected directly into the camera. Uh, so this just makes life a lot bit easier. We're in a rush right now and it's just Jericho and I filming. So, you know, th there's cleaner ways of doing this, but just having this whole user interface on the uh, actual, you know, focus wheel just makes life way more easier. When you first open it, you kind of get overwhelmed because, you know, nothing else is out there like that right now like this. But once you get a hang of it, it's super simple, it's super intuitive. The next things I like about these are the weight. These feel really similar to uh, the Lauer Rangers. I would easily use this on run a gun. You just gotta make sure you're using lens support on your camera because uh, this is front heavy enough to where it's gonna be weighing down on there. Go watch Tito uh, Anamorphic on a budget channel. He talks about proper rigging for anamorphics because if they're not perfectly parallel it's going to cause some funkiness in the d stretch another exciting thing is these are par focal this was my setup before this is what the, the setup i was trying to use which is still a great setup if you own the lower rangers and you need to shoot a lot of spherical 16 by 9 type coverage you could get their anamorphic front adapter paired up to there and still get an anamorphic look out of it but if you're someone like me where i mostly shoot anamorphic on everything and if i'm not shooting anamorphic i might just be like using uh, autofocus lens unless i have a team the next thing we have 77 millimeter fronts again exactly like the rangers so you're not going to be locked into using map boxes which you know is a thing that always happens uh usually on a lot of anamorphics because the front on them are so large but you can see this is my polar pro helix madlock this vnd is pretty much glued onto most of my lenses but look at this we're using a vnd on an anamorphic par focal zoom like literally when when they first told me about this i was like 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 really like are you like what's like what's what's the catch here there's no catch so the first lens is a 28 to 55 and the second lens is a 50 to 100. a lot of the 1.5x anamorphics are coming out as they go up past like 70 millimeters they soften up somehow even at 100 millimeters this thing is still performing very well and it's kind of outperforming some of those other lenses which again wow i don't know how you're doing this so now let's get into some of the downsides obviously to make like a cine zoom like this so compact and lightweight and still high quality you know there's going to be certain kind of design things that they have to do in order to you know keep that quality up uh, one of those things being how much it protrudes in the back the 20 to 55 does not clear the mofage poco adapter that means it's probably not going to clear most of your rear element um type adapters uh, but the 50 to 100 actually if i can <laughs> she does clear the mofage pocos if you're gonna get one obviously 5100 you know most people actually shoot like most films that we watch are actually 40 millimeters and up in anamorphic even for super 35. if you're gonna get one maybe this is the one to get and you can still use it with all these there is some uh chromatic aberrations but it's actually very similar to the nanomorphs chromatic aberrations to where in my mind uh when shooting you know other anamorphics these are actually very clean in their chromatic aberrations uh let's talk about uh the distortion pin cushion distortion i'm not a fan of pin cushion distortion uh to me it kind of sucks you out of the anamorphic look and it makes it look flat almost but the fact that laua uh has designed these to be so clean you can easily just add barrel distortion and post i've been doing that for any time i use the nanomorphs and any times i've been using this i'll show you guys the trick it's real simple i don't do anything fancy i know there's tutorials out there and showing you like more advanced ways of doing it and all of a sudden you could kind of feel how the image kind of jumps out it kind of gives you that 3d pop it gives you that traditional anamorphic look that a lot of us are chasing I actually think there's gonna be a lot of people looking at the 50 to 100 because I know personally for me, you know, I have a bunch of different anamorphics. And so say if I wanna shoot a faster prime on a project and say we're shooting full frame or something, but we have uh, like a 28, a 35 and like a 42, 45 millimeter lens, but then we need to zoom for some other shots. You can easily crop in a super 35 on your camera and you're gonna get like a 75 to like 120, 135 maybe, I don't know. I'm just doing the math in my head. It's probably way off. When it was time for me to do a video on this, I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to say about these lenses because they're just great. Like they're such unique, affordable. There's nothing else on the market uh, that can compete with these right now. But yeah, we got to get out to Lau. Lau, you guys, uh, you know, this is this is crazy. Uh, but yeah, I'll start rambling on officially. Okay, peace. Goodbye.